All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us again. Hope you all had a uh, had a great Easter. Uh, long weekend, obviously here in in Australia. Um, coming back um, on Tuesday. So with everyone now uh, in the meeting or on their way in, we might get started. So I'll hand over to Greg, who's going to talk to us about ZSM. Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you, Daniel, and welcome everyone for joining the the webinar series again uh, this week. Uh, like Daniel said, oh, sorry, hang on. Like Daniel said, I'll cover off a new cementitious uh, binder system that Bluey have developed uh, called ZSM, um, which is an acid resistant cementitious binder. Um, so I'll cover a bit of the backstory first about what the product is uh, and the industries that we were developing the product for and how we got to where we are, uh, and then how we've advanced it into other industries as well. So what is ZSM? Uh, ZSM is a modified calcium sodium aluminum silicate technology. Uh, so it's an inorganic polymer technology. Uh, it's got a very high percentage of recycled materials within the binder. Uh, it's got excellent acid resistance and chemical resistance properties. Uh, it's got long-term strength um, dur durability uh, and also provides an alkaline environment to passivate steel uh, for corrosion protection. Um, the image on the right there is the a family of gel polymers where the product sits into. Um, so just it shows you that there's a very broad range of uh, products that are called geopolymers, uh, and this is one of these products that can sit into that family. So how did Bluey come to develop products? Um, so we've got a very good product knowledge. We've got 15 years experience within the wastewater industry, uh, and this is where we initially decided to develop this product uh, to suit this market. Um, we've got our own in-house product development team uh, with an industrial chemist uh, to help develop this technology. Uh, and we're utilising up to 60% recycled materials uh, within the finished products. So not within the binder itself, but when we're talking about finished products, uh, they become our shock creeps and our uh, grouts that utilise this binder. Uh, and we've carried out very extensive in-house testing and as well as external testing with uh, water authorities uh, and NADA labs to justify the performance of the product. So the industry that we've been looking at, the ZOSM cement binder for was the sewer rehabilitation market was the main uh, industry we were looking for. Um, so the history that's carried for the sewer rehabilitation, um, traditionally Sydney Water used to carry out a 20 millimetre thick epoxy coating into this environment. Uh, so the photo on the right there is a live sewer where most of these applications happen. Uh, you can see the fairly tough environment and to put on 20 millimetres of epoxy is very hard to do. You need a lot of experience, it's very expensive. Um, other areas of other products that have been used are HDPE, which we covered off in previous seminars. Um, in a live sewer environment, it's very tricky. You've got very different uh, undulations and uh, uh, sewers, so it becomes very expensive to perform work uh, and very timely uh, to do the works. Uh, the most common application at the moment is using a CAC, uh, and I'll cover this material off uh, in the coming slides of what the CAC is. Uh, so it's a sacrificial acid resistant material uh, that gets sprayed onto the, the sewer market, the sewer, uh, the live sewers. Uh, and then a new technology, which is the geopolymers, uh, which has been very heavily tested over the last few years with Sydney Water and Sydney University. Um, and a lot of people are trying to go over into this market, um, these, these products, sorry. So why do we need concrete corrosion protection? Um, as we've covered previously, you've got very turbulence in aid sewer markets. We create hydrogen disulfide gases, uh, which then turn it into a sulfuric acid. Uh, and this ends up attacking the Portland cement above the flow lines. Um, so you lose this cement matrix, which equals corrosion, and then you get a structure failure. So this is just a diagram showing where the attack happens. So anything below the water level, you don't get any attack uh, to your, your concrete, uh, it's all above your, your water flow lines. Uh, so this is where all the, the corrosion protection and the rehabilitation takes place within live sewers. So they'll get the flow right down to a level, uh, go in there and work in this environment uh, to spray the new, the new coatings on there. So CACs, uh, or calcium aluminum cement, this is the most common product used in sewer rehabilitation at the moment. Um, it outperforms OPC concretes uh, in the sewer environment. Um, the CAC, what it is, it's got the ability to stifle the metabolism of the acid generating bacteria. Uh, so what it basically does, it, it, the acid grows onto the, the CAC uh, and then it basically falls off. It doesn't allow it to, to eat into the product itself. 
uh, and it's a non-structural application. And what we mean by that is conventional HACs or CAC products uh, undergo conversion. So what that means is over the design life of the product, uh, it will lose compressive strength uh, in certain applications, uh, which allows you not to, which basically means you can't use it for a structural environment. If, if your product's losing strength, then it's no good for a structural application. Um, the product itself, a CAC, can be very hard to spray and finish uh, due to it's got a fairly rapid cure. Um, also because you're utilizing a CAC aggregates um, to achieve the chemical resistance. Um, if you use, just use the CAC binder with normal uh, aggregates, you don't get the same chemical resistance. Um, and because you have to use the CAC aggregates, they're very one shape and very hard to, to get a good grading curve on your product uh, to be able to spray it, uh, to give you good rebound uh, and also good finishing on the product. The other disadvantage um, or issue with the CACs uh, when you're doing a dry spray application is the very fine particles that come from uh, the product uh, when you're spraying it, uh, and this damages the filtration systems uh, when they're doing their, their live sewer applications, uh, which cost a lot of money to replace these filters uh, within the, the sewers. So geopolymers, this is the, the new products that everyone is looking at to try and get into the, the, sewer, the sewer market. Um, what are geopolymers? So they traditionally in alkali cements consist of predominantly al aluminium silicates or polymers, polymer bonds. Um, traditional starting materials for geopolymers are fume silica, fly ash and metal slag, um, and they're alkali reactive on site. Now, this becomes very hard uh, and very dangerous to, to activate these, these products on site. Uh, there are pre-bagged geopolymers that have been developed over the past years and are getting a lot of testing done through the water authorities around Australia and the university but they don't perform as well as traditional alkali reactive geopolymers. Um, so geopolymers, it's a polymer, but not, not all polymers are plastic. Um, they look and feel like cement. They have a chemical structure like a natural stone, which gives an excellent chemical resistance. Um, but as we said, the pre-bagged geopolymers, which are water activated, not alkali reactivated, uh, don't give you the same chemical resistance as a traditional uh, uh, geopolymer does in the university labs. They perform very well and outperform the CACs uh, in that environment. So now we get to ZSM binder. Um, so what is ZSM? Like we talked about before, it's a modified calcium sodium uh, aluminium silicate technology. So it's a structural binder technology that demonstrates no risk of conversion. Uh, so it's got a similar uh, starting chemistry to the CAC, but it's been modified uh, with the sodium in there to give us the, the no risk of conversion. Um, it's got very high chemical and acid resistance, uh, like your CACs. Um, it provides an alkaline environment for corrosion protection to your steel and can be used for multiple product applications. So this is the binder technology we're talking about here. Sorry, going back to that. And when we talk about using multiple product applications, we can change uh, put it into one of our traditional products to create an uh, acid resistant grout or acid resistant shotcrete, which I'll cover up a couple of products we've developed uh, using this binder system. So the binder technology also includes a lot of recycled components. Uh, so one part of it is curbside powder glass, uh, fly ash, glass burner slag, uh, clay and silica deposits. Um, the advantage, and I'll cover this off course a little bit later with the, the curbside glass, um, because of the technology that we use, you can't use normal glass or recycled glass into normal OPC cements because they have an AAR reaction. Uh, but with the, the ZOSEM binder technology, we can use the curbside glass uh, into the product. So the applications and products, uh, for structural sewer lining products, uh, contaminated ground grouting applications, we can develop products for that. Uh, we can produce acid resistant repair mortars uh, and acid resistant concretes um, to take all in different environments. So BlueSEM Zero Glass, this is a product that's been developed with the ZSM uh, binder technology. So what is ZSM, or well, the Zero Glass, sorry. Uh, it's an acid resistant shotcrete um, for the sewer structural lining systems. So it's going into that same industry of rehabilitation of sewers, uh, utilizing the blue SEM zero glass. Uh, and within this product, we've got greater than 60% recycled waste products. So that's including your fly ash, uh, your binder systems, as well as the, um, the glass aggregates and glass powder. And it's the ne next generation of geopolymers. 
So where are we going to use the zeo, zeo glass? Uh, for shock to sewer linings, manhole refurbishments, wastewater treatment plants, both new and old, uh, culvert repairs and relining. So there's the photo on the right hand side showing a culvert that can be relined with the, the zero glass. Uh, and also into chemical buns into, the, um, into that environment. The properties of zero glass, uh, it's got very high ultra build in single pass. Uh, so to dry spray shockcrete, it's got very neat little rebound, uh, less than 5%, uh, very high compressive and flexible strength in the product. Very minimal dust emissions, You've got low dry shrinkage uh, and a high acid resistance using the, the ZSM binder. Uh, and this is just a little video, hopefully it works. Um, showing the, the dry spray application of the zero glass. So you can see there you've got a very high build, very quick build uh, in your application uh, with little rebounds uh, and very little dust as well. So you can see the build up on a wall, we can get up to about 400 millimetres of build out in a single pass. Overhead, you can get up to about 200 millimetres without any dropout. Uh, some application techniques, uh, like we just showed you there, dry spray is traditional application for the, the sewer environment. Uh, we can do a wet spray application for your culvert repairs. Uh, and that's the image on the right hand side is showing you a culvert application using a wet spray. Um, and then you can also do a hand applied for your small applications, manholes, uh, benches and the likes. So the blue sand and zero glass aggregates, uh, like we talked about before, uh, using the, the binder technology allows us to use recycled glass aggregates. Um, because the, the technology in the binder doesn't have any issues with the alkali aggregate reaction, uh, which is breaking the the glass will break down normal OP cement and cause this issue. Um, we can put this into our binder system. Uh, we can also use the glass aggregates in other binder systems like our CSAs for our fast set concretes. Um, it just gives us an advantage to, to take, it, take advantage of this uh, opportunity. Uh, and it's a, it's a big issue in the, in the, in the environment at the moment. Um, another advantage of the glass aggregates, it's got minimal water demand, uh, which enhances the durability of zero glass. Um, and it also addresses the environmental issue with all the stockpiles of curbside glass out there. Uh, and we've had a look at it with the current in applications in Sydney water. Uh, once you, if we can get this up and running and, and all the applications in the marketplace, we could probably take up most of the curbside glass that is out there in the stockpiles in New South Wales uh, for doing the, the sewer applications. So the testing program, like I said, we've done very extensive testing on the zero glass uh, for, to prove that it is an acid resistant product and also to prove uh, that it is stable uh, and doesn't have any conversion issues. Um, so we've done a lot of testing alongside several leading sewer refurbishment products, um, the CACs, the geopolymers, which are the pre-bags, also some acid resistant cements. Um, uh, also in-house testing and Sydney University is currently doing a, a free year program carrying out testing on all different geopolymers into the marketplace. So the Sydney University pro program, uh, they're putting in uh, cubes up into the Sydney North Head digester tanks, which is a very aggressive environment. Um, this will eat normal IPC cement in about, about two years, it'll degrade uh, normal IPC cement. Um, so they're doing a three year program, comparing it all different geopolymers against the CSE control. Uh, and the results so far, they're about 18 months in with our zero glass. Uh, all their results are online with the CACs and also in line with our in-house testing that we've done, uh, which is uh, over, two and a, over two years in, in progression at the moment. So this is our in-house testing. Uh, like again, we've tested against all uh, the current products in the marketplace, the current uh, CACs, uh, acid resistant cement, which is your golden bay at the top there. Uh, and then uh, geopolymer, which is your geospray. And then the bottom one is our zero glass product. So currently we're two years in, um, testing results are available. Uh, so every six months we're taking out and doing measurements and checking the products. So this is just showing you the, the current status. After six months, you can see there the images there, the bottom two, uh, the bottom one is our zero glass and the Kurnios is the CA, current CSE one on the marketplace. So both of them are very similar. It happened in the first six months. There wasn't much change. A little bit of the surface is gone away. Um, 
you can see the geospray, the geopolymers are, are fairly heavily affected uh, in this acid environment. After 12 months, um, the testing on the, the Golden Bay acid cement and the geopolymers were stopped because there was almost nothing left of both samples. Uh, so they were taken out where the CACs and the zero glass were still going. Um, and as you can see, there, there wasn't much uh, issues with the, the zero glass. It's performing very well uh, compared to the, the, the CAC product. And then 18 months, uh, ours is the, the zero glass is performing still very well. Not a lot of issues um, and strength loss in there. After 12 months, we were looking, oh, sorry, 18 months. Uh, the zero glass is, is uh, gained about 1%, 1.8% 1 uh, in weight loss or gain, um, and it's swelled about 0.1%, uh, where the Kernios, the CAC, has lost about 7% uh, in, in weight, uh, and it's swelled about half a percent as well. And then again, 24 months. So after two years, so th these are still ongoing, um, and it's performing very well. And like we said, the the testing that's been carried out by Sydney Water and Sydney University uh, at the same time, comparing both products, uh, is aligning with the results that we've been getting in-house as well. Okay, so what we move on to now is another product that has been developed based off the, the ZOSM technology, uh, which is our HS400 Plus. Um, so HS400 Plus um, has been developed for a particular product that has got contaminated ground uh, and our HS400 Plus is a rock bulk wrap, uh, designed to protect DCP bulks in a tunnel environment, uh, which has come across some ammonium sulfate ground conditions. So, so what we've done, we've done a, a very extensive testing program for the project. Uh, so we accelerated aging and chemical testing uh, in an ammonium sulfate solution. And we've tested this at 20 degrees, 38 degrees and 60 degrees. Uh, just to prove that the product won't go into conversion under these temperatures, uh, both in normal water and the ammonium sulfate solution. Uh, and then we've carried out XRD testing on the, the control samples, the samples that were in normal water, and also the samples that were in the ammonium sulfate solution to check if there was any chemical decomposition of the binder. Um, and then we did a Smith hammer testing as well. Um, the Smith hammer testing was more just to check the surface hardness of the product uh, to make sure we were still getting the same grout bond uh, to the rock in the tunnel environment for a rock bolt. So ZOS, the, the BlueSim HS400 Plus, um, again, it's based off the ZSM binder technology. Um, it's basically an acid resistant future tropic rock bulk grout. The same as our traditional H400, uh, which is a normal OPC cement uh, rock bulk grout, which is done for most of the tunneling bolts uh, here in Sydney. Uh, we then just changed the cement binder technology from OPC and adapted our ZSM binder to give you the same product performance. It looks and feels like normal cement, uh, or the normal rock bulk grout, um, but it gives us acid resistance. So where we can use this uh, for rock bolting and contaminated grounds, uh, it's a cement system, but not a polymer, so you don't need any special pumping equipment. So you can use the traditional uh, mixes and pumps that are on the, the jumbos for the rock bolts in the tunnels, uh, which is a big advantage for this application, not having to bring in special equipment, training operators and the likes, uh, and gives you an acid resistant rock bolt grout. Uh, and the other advantage is, like we talked about, it gives you an alkaline environment for your corrosion protection of your rock bolts. Uh, so that's the photo on the right hand side there is just a cross section of a rock bolt, DCP rock bolt that's being grouted um, both inside and out the sheathing uh, and then cut in half so you can see the, the corrosion protection with the bolt grout. So the testing program, um, like we said, we've, we've covered uh, the compressive strength uh, at the start, one, three, seven, 28 days. Uh, we're doing Nord testing on the product for durability. Uh, also dry shrinkage, water penetration, bleed testing. Um, and then we did the age testing as well. So the product itself, this is just the results, just an overview of the results um, that we carried out on the product. So it's giving us greater than 60 MPA days as our control sample. So we wanted to make sure after all that chemical testing uh, and, and accelerated testing that we weren't losing any strength in the product. So dry shrinkage, the specification called for less than 650 microstrains at 56 days, which we achieved. Uh, water penetration is the, the British standard or the European standard. Um, traditionally, needs to be the DIN standard of Germans. Um, so we achieved 14 millimetres and 17 millimetres penetration uh, for water penetration. Um, 
So this covers across all the, the RMS standards for the bridge um, B80 specifications, which call for less than 25 millimetres. So it's a very, a very good performance in that product. Uh, bleed test, there's no bleed on the product being a fixed tropic ground. And then the age testing. So the chemical and age testing that was done at 60 degrees, 38 and 20 degrees, uh, all achieved greater than the 60 MPA. Uh, so we had no strength uh, loss at all in the product. And then the XRD testing on the product. So this was done on the control samples as well as the, the chemical samples. Uh, we tested this five millimetres in from the surface and also halfway into the, the samples as well to make sure we had no, no chemical change in the composition of the product binder systems. Uh, and, and that's what it proved in the product. And that's the end of the, the seminar today. Um, just in summary, I guess on the on the blue SEM, what we talked about is the ZSM. We can modify most of our traditional grout and repair mortars uh, and adapt the, the ZSM technology to create a range of products. So we can do high flow grouts, we can do fixed tropic grouts for just certain applications, uh, repair mortars and the like. So it's not just limited to those two applications. So thank you, and I hope that was um informative and if there's any questions you can either unmute yourself or there's the chat feature down the bottom you can type in a, a question as well thank you greg that's a um, really good um, presentation as greg mentioned this is a pretty new field for us some new technology um, we've been really strongly supported by uh, new south wales uh, government and governments here in australia including the environmental protection authority also sydney water have got right behind it um, as an example the environmental Protection Authority just um, awarded a grant for $1 million to uh, our aggregate supplier uh, who's able to crush, grade and clean the, um, the glass aggregate for us because it's become such a, a burden, the, um, the stockpiles of glass accumulating here in Australia and the lack of practical usage for that glass. They see this as a, um, a really good upvaluing of, of waste products, um, not just glass, but also things like slag and um, other materials which uh, aren't so easy to um, to dispose of. So pretty exciting area for us um, going forward. Uh, welcome any questions if you've got any. I've also uploaded a technical note there which you can see in the chat if you just click on that um, and you can download the technical note and that just gives a bit more background on some of the testing that, um, that Greg referred to as well. Uh, just for your interest so you should be able to see that and download it and again the video of the presentation will be online later today uh, i'll also be presenting at one o'clock today on fluid grouts for post tensioning some of you may have seen that last week but we're doing that at one o'clock for some of our international um, guests at a, at a better time that suits them and then we'll be back again tomorrow at 11 o'clock and, um, and one o'clock so uh, basement waterproofing um, tomorrow and um, chemical resistance lining for um, wastewater treatment plants. So look out for those um, if they're of interest. So it doesn't look like we have any questions. So I'll um, thank you all again for, for joining us and um, I'll either see you at one o'clock or, or maybe 11 o'clock tomorrow. Thanks again. <laughs>